Now we get to have some real fun. The other stuff was fun, but this is like really fun. We're gonna combine all the rules that we've learned and do these types of problems. This is what your grade level is right here. So let's jump right into it. So I'm gonna start with this problem here. I'm just doing some sample problems up here. <clears throat> doing this. Now I don't want you to panic, so take a deep breath, don't panic on me. And I want you to just think, okay, slow but sure, just small baby steps. So I'm going to look at this first problem here, and I'm a, I see I have a bunch of stuff on the numerator and the denominator. Treat it like separate problems, so just take your time with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this numerator, and I'm going to start with looking at my numbers. Let me make it a little bit bigger there. And I can look and I can see that I have a 2 here. Remember, if we don't see a number, that there's a 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So I'm going to write a 2 up here. I'm going to cross that off. Multiple ways to do this. I'm going to show you the easiest way that I know how to do it. So I'm going to leave my parenthesis there. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my letters. I've got a C here, so I'm going to bring a C. Let me rewrite that so it looks a little bit better. Sorry about that. So I've got a 2 and I've got a C. I've got a 1 here. I'm going to look to see on see if there's any more C's on this problem, and there is not. So I'm just going to bring that C over. Next, I'm going to write my A. Notice I'm just going in order that it appears. So just take it step by step. A negative 2. Notice I'm multiplying the same base. When I have the same base and I'm multiplying, I add exponents. So negative 2 plus a negative 4 is a negative 6. So my A's are done. So you're just applying these rules. So then I write my B. I've got a negative 2 here and a negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is a negative 5. All raised to the power of 4. Okay, so I just rewrote my numerator. Now before I bring it over here, let me bring it up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and move it over here. So I have a 4 here. My 4 is not showing up very well. There you go. And remember the 4, the power rule, you apply to everything inside. So I've got 2 to the 4th power. That's done. C, what exponent's there if you don't see it? That's right, 1. 1 times 4 is 4. That's done. Bring my base over. Look at my numbers. A negative 6 times a 4 is a negative 24. Just doing this multiplication on the fly. Remember, you can use Desmos if you want. So that's good. Or a calculator. B. I've got negative 5 times 4 is a negative 20. So there. In two steps, I've combined that first step. Isn't that lovely? Aren't you having fun? Now all I'm going to do is apply this 4 because I've got powers on the bottom. So I'm going to bring my base over. I've got a negative 1 times a 4 is a negative 4. I've got a C. There's nothing to combine them with, so I'm going to take my 4 times my 2, which is an 8. And then times B, which I can just combine it all, 3 times 4, which is 12. So I really don't even need my parentheses there because there's nothing there keeping it. So I'm going to erase those. And of course, as I did that, I erased my A. But there we go, A and A. Now, what you learned, you did this in the quotient rule on the last one. So you've simplified this so far. So now I'm going to go ahead and write my fraction bar. I'm going to put a spacer in here so we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to combine what I can combine. I'm going to look and I've got a 2 to the 4th. Well, 2 to the 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. My 2 is simplified. Then I'm going to look at my C, and on that C, I'm going to see if there's any C's on the bottom, and I can see that there is an 8. So 4, take away 8. So 4 minus 8. So that's going to be a negative 4. So I'm going to have a C to the negative 4. My C's are combined. Again, multiple ways to do this. I'm showing you how, I, how my mind works. Okay, now I'm going to take my A. I've got a negative 24 on the top. So a negative 24, take away, now that's a negative 4, remember, a negative 4. So minus a negative 4, which really means you're adding it. 
So you have a negative 20. Negative 24 plus 4 is negative 20. So my A's are done. And then my B. Negative 20 minus 12. So that's combining those. So I get a negative 32. Again, use Desmos to do your calculations, or you can use a regular calculator. All right, now I've got all that. So the next step, I'm going to erase and give myself a little room here. So notice there was no denominator here, but I'm going to keep that fraction bar because I know I have negatives. So now I'm going to simplify what I have over here. So my 16 is going to stay in my numerator because it doesn't have a negative with it. My C goes to the bottom. Lose the negative, keep the exponent. My A goes to the bottom. Lose the negative, keeps the exponent, as well as the B. So your answer is this, and looking at your answer choices, notice that they write them in the, in the alphabetical order, which technically is how you're supposed to do it, so let me do it mathematically correct. Your A comes first, your B, and then your C. That helps you. Otherwise, if you can identify it, you can notice that D is your answer. Boy, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? No, it just took you a long time, each step. So step by step by step. It is just so much fun. I know you're just saying, yes, Miss Weatherall, we agree. It's so much fun. All right, so let me do one more of these bad boys with you. And then you can practice because you're going to practice a little bit. And then you're going to actually take a quiz. Ooh, not really a quiz, an assignment. We'll say assignment because we don't like the word quiz. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's do 14 because that looks so much fun. All right. Again, let's start small and work our way around. Looking at my numerator, I'm going to go ahead and see if there's anything to combine with the 2 up in my numerator only. And I only have a 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. So that's done. H, now I can cross off that. I know that anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So I'm just going to leave it without the H for right now and move to the next letter, which is a J. Got three J's here, and I'm looking, I see another J, and I've got four. Same base, I'm multiplying, so I add exponents. So three plus four is seven. So I've crossed that off. Bring my K now. Three, and is there any, something else to combine it with? And you say, yes, a negative one. And so three plus a negative one is two. And then notice I have an H over here, so I'm going to go ahead and put my H negative one. Now you could brought that over earlier if you wanted to. And then don't forget, this whole thing is still raised to the negative 3, but I want to go ahead and rewrite it so it looks a little bit easier because there's nothing else to, no power rules. So I'm going to bring this as my numerator. So 2, J7, K2, H to the negative 1. I'm not doing anything with it yet. 2, h to the negative 1. I'm just copying the denominator now. And yes, it's a lot of writing, but the, if you do these steps, you won't make mistakes. It's when you try to just do it in your head where the mistakes come. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to combine what's inside before I apply that negative 3 to all that, because I think that's too much work. So let's do the inside the parentheses first. I've got a 2 up top and a 2 down below. They cancel out to the number 1, so that's good. So now I'm going to write my J. I'm going to leave parentheses here. I've got a 7 here and a 4 here, so it's a 7. Take away 4, which is really add negative 4, so I've got J3. K, I've got 2 up top, 2 down below, so 2 take away 2, which is 0. So K0. And then H. I've got a negative 1. Negative 1 minus a negative 1. So that is really negative 1 plus 1, which is also 0. So there's nothing in the denominator left. But that's still raised to that outside exponent of negative 3. So let's see how we're doing here. All right. I know that J... 3 times a negative 3 is negative 9. This is 1. This is 1. So 
That simplification is done. I cannot have a negative in my exponent, so what does that cause it do? It causes the j to go to the bottom. Lose a negative, keep the exponent. What do we put up top if there's nothing there? We want that one placeholder. So you can see your answer would be A. So that looked like a beast, but really it wasn't once you started the steps. So practice these before you take your quiz. I will talk to you soon.